been a long time since I've been on the mic. He's hiding, he's been hiding all week. Yeah, so this is my guy T. What up? I'm gonna be asking you some crazy questions. Go ahead, man. If you could be any animal in the world, what would you be and why? I gotta be a heron or a stork. Because they're very majestic, very predominant in my culture, very godlike. And there's many reasons because when you hear about a stork, you hear about the story of birth, fertilization, like the birth of people, so. That's the craziest thing. No one's ever said that. I've interviewed hundreds of people. Yeah, man. So T was like in charge of the blessing every morning. I actually wanted to ask you this, like what did you do to prepare for it? Well, for me, like I've always been, you know, I moved from Portland, Oregon, so I've been in nature ever since, you know, COVID. I've always been in nature. Everyone was, you know, isolated in their homes, but I was outside in the mountains, in the forest, in the rivers, I guess you could say, fly fishing, camping, hiking. Doing this is just a representation of who I am. And not only that, it helps the team understand something more than them, you know? Uh, being in a good mind space is very important. A lot of people miss out on that because we live our day-to-day -day lives in such a busy way as most Americans do, even the Japanese. But the way we have that mental break is to be somewhere where it's sacred, I'd say. Something that's sacred can mean a lot to a lot of different people, but in Japan, it's the shrines. Shinto shrines, they are very spiritual, you know? Gods in everything, from the wood to the rock to the minerals to the trees and the mountains, everything. So it's a way to respect where we came from, respect everything around us here, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Man. It's been dope, it's been super dope. Just waking up, seeing like the environment, the peace, serenity. Facts. Every town we are at, he's always got somewhere we can go to just reflect and start the day off right. Being a lettering artist as I am, seeing the calligraphy done in our books, the Goshu Incho, is pretty cool and like I never knew that was a thing until recently um, that every shrine has their own seal. And talk to us about your hair man. This guy has had more hairstyles here than I've seen anyone else. Yeah, so I wear the braids as like a power structure and homage to my ancestors. Uh, we all used to have long hair, but through, you know, many years of colonization, change, we all cut it off. But for me, I'm kind of reclaiming that, my indigenous roots, so that I could bring power and strength from my ancestors to now. So it's been helping me out a lot spiritually, you know. Usually I don't drink, usually, you know, I don't smoke at all, but you know, we're here in Japan, so we gotta take it easy. But once we're back home, I'm back on. Like, how has the trip been for you? I know this isn't your first time here, but like, how is it? So going back, you know, thinking about our first day all the way to now, I think the team's been very focused, aware, excited. As a whole, you know, we have things that are on and off in terms of, you know, being in Japanese culture, immersed in many things. You know, a lot of Japanese people, they're very, you know, shocked when we walk the streets, we're on the train, so, but either way, when we're here, we show respect and the trip's been really good. Everyone's been respectful thus far, which I think Japanese people will appreciate that. And I appreciate that because I used to live here years ago. Well, cool, man. It's been um, really nice getting to know you. The Zen, I think the, the structure that you have, getting to know you, your goals, like it's super dope. Like, I love, love it, dude, Kampai. Appreciate that, man, Kampai. She is. <laughs>